If you guys have been following Guns N' Roses the past several years, then you would know one thing that fans, including myself, have been clamoring for has been new music. A few years ago, a number of Guns N' Roses songs from the Chinese democracy era fell into the hands of one fan who purchased them from a locker from someone who used to work for the band's record label. In that locker were a number of demos from the early 2000s, and those songs would find their way online, resulting in the fan getting banned from future Guns N' Roses shows and being threatened with legal action. One of those songs he allegedly had possession of was called Hard School, which the band finally played live. Today, let's explore the history of the song. It is thought that the song Hard School actually dates back to the mid-90s. During a July 1996 interview with Howard Stern, bassist Duff McKagan revealed at the time that Guns N' Roses were back together in the studio, working on their first proper follow-up to 1991's double album Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. In the same interview, he would reveal that the band was working on a song for a new Jackie Chan movie. Here's what he had to say. I saw Slash the other day and I was saying to him, what the hell's going on, you know? I mean, where's, where's the next Guns N' Roses album? And like, he didn't have an answer either. He was what? like, I'm working on some things, I got some surprises, and you know, I was just like, hey, shut up. Come here, <laughs> what are you yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 what's going on? We're, we're in this, we're in writing new songs. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and we, Axel's into it? Yeah, totally. And actually today I was going to have to fly back right after this. Oh, really? We're going to start recording uh, for this Jackie Chan movie, the next one. Oh, I see. Good uh, Lord, Jackie Chan is making more movies. Yeah, could somebody well, explain <laughs> Jackie Chan to me? Does anybody recognize that this guy is a He's stunt just man? He's make 50 billion movies before anybody gets it. You know what an insult that is to anybody who trains in <laughs> acting? I mean, seriously, Jackie Chan is happening? Axel's a huge fan of Jackie and Chan. And everybody's recording songs for him. I know. <laughs> Screw Jackie Chan. But, you know, so I think the time off, I mean, as frustrated as some of us might have got. Right. Me included, you know? Right. Um, I think it. There was a reason for it. Because, it was a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. Didn't, it didn't seem like it. <laughs> well, everyone got cleaned up. I mean, uh, Slash. I, don't, I can't tell if Slash is, is cleaned up. Is he clean? Up. I don't know. I don't know. I thought he was hitting the sauce that day, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't tell. Well, Slash is, is Slash. Yeah. You know? he, right. And I mean, he's like made out of iron. Snippets of the song would leak ahead of Chinese Democracy coming out in 2008. During the time of its leak, it was thought that the song's original name was Checkmate, with frontman Axl Rose confirming in a fan chat in 2008 saying, Checkmate is a bogus title, the working title is Jackie Chan. The full song wouldn't leak until a few years ago when the whole Locker story came out. Once the full song leaked, fans soon noticed that it was now called Hard School. Some believe that the lyrics were written about Slash, as it was likely the lyrics were written after he left the band, but the music itself seems to have been written in 1995 or 1996, during the time when Slash was still technically in Guns N' Roses, but was out on tour for his first Snake Pit record. In former Guns N' Roses drummer Matt Sorum's book, he would recall working in the studio with Axel during that time, and how things were deteriorating in the band. Sorum would recall his frustration in the book saying how he would normally show up drunk to the studio, resulting in Rose screaming at him over the phone about his work ethic. Sorum would write in his book, and I quote, I was just about to throw in the towel when Rick Rubin showed up. We'd previously agreed that he would produce our next record, and he had been waiting a long time to hear what we had come up with. Okay, so let me hear what you guys got. Where's Slash? I glanced at the others and then quickly said, uh, he's not here right now. We then played a couple tracks. Axel had one track he wanted to use for a Jackie Chan movie, and Rick really seemed to like that one. He turned to Axel after listening to it and said, do you have any lyrics or melody? Axel gave him a surprised look. No. Rick scratched his head. The atmosphere was weird. Okay, he said. Then he left. After the door swung shut behind him, Axel said, I never want to see that guy here again. He's fired. F that guy. Let's talk a bit about the leaks and the locker story. The fan who ended up getting his hands on the demos and the locker was named Rick Dunsford. He would be interviewed by The Dwyer and Michael Show and recalled how everything went down saying, about two and a half months ago, I drove to Virginia and there was a storage locker that belonged to Tom Zutat the former GNR a &R rep. He didn't pay his bills or something and it was auctioned off. The individual that bought the locker, there was about 20 CDs in this locker of unreleased Guns N' Roses music from around 99 to 2000 or 2001. Dunsford and several others would raise $15,000 to purchase the music from the owner of the storage locker. When this news came out, Guns N' Roses management reached out to Rick, offering him the money he had paid for the locker in return for the music being returned. 
but the agreement would fall through after the song started to leak online. Guns N' Roses management and their record label blamed Rick for the leak, and Dunsford would add in the same interview, I know the seller that I bought them from was continuing to sell to other individuals and there was a massive leak, so pretty much I've been blamed for this. Following the leak, Dunsford tried to attend a Guns N' Roses show in Wichita, Kansas in late 2019. It would turn out he was banned for life from any future Guns N' Roses show. He would reveal in the same interview, the ban is pretty much for the rest of my life, is what the head of security in that video was telling me. They made it clear that if I'm spotted at all, I will be arrested on the spot. I was supposed to go see them this Sunday, he would say. Dunsford would maintain his innocence, saying he wasn't the one who leaked the tracks. And I also want to clarify that even though it was reported there was 20 CDs worth of material and around 97 tracks, these weren't all complete songs. Some had vocals, some were instrumental tracks, while others were isolated tracks like drum and guitar parts. It was also reported in January of 2020 that the band and their label were possibly going to take legal action against Dunsford while also blaming their former A&R man Tom Zutat for being so careless with old demos of the band's recordings. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.